Good morning, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Um, I believe that uh, the protocol has been established and I would uh, crave your indulgence uh, to rely on that protocol that has been established. I would just recognize the uh, hardworking men and women of CSCS that have worked so hard uh, to put together today's um, uh, conference, uh, ably led by Mr. Aaron Ajalo Waziri. I welcome you all to this flagship event, which is one of several to commemorate 25 years of operations of CSCS and to reinforce our brand as a thought leading institution in Nigeria. I am optimistic on the prospects of this great nation in forging local solutions to global challenges. Today, the world is still at mystery on how we managed through the COVID-19 pandemic, which brought most nations, including some of the more scientifically advanced countries to their knees. Some say it's the natural geography. Many say it is our genetics, and even some say it is fate. Whatever it, it, whatever it is that makes us tick reinforces our strength, especially when we leverage our collective capabilities. Indeed, it would be a fallacy to say the health pandemic is over, but it is fair to believe that the war has subsided, and indeed, our gathering here today attests to that fact. Without being cynical, an equally devastating battle is locking globally, and indeed, it is mutating faster than many can appreciate. Indeed, a hyper-connected world means that technology has permeated our lives and livelihoods. As technology continues to revolutionize the financial markets and advance prosperity across most economic sectors, it comes with the scary baggage of cyber crimes. According to Cybersecurity Ventures, global cyber crime is expected to grow by 15% annually, reaching an estimated 10.5 trillion US dollars by 2025, up from three trillion dollars in 2015. This represents one of the greatest transfers of wealth in history with an economic impact that is exponentially larger than the annual loss due to natural disasters and more profitable than the global trade on all major illegal drugs combined. These figures lead criminals to make significant investments in new technologies to exploit the opportunities arising from technological advancements. We are not left out. According to the Nigerian Communications Commission, Nigeria loses about 500 million US dollars annually to cybercrime, a figure that amounts, a figure which amounts to about 0.08% of the country's GDP. The increasing trends of cybercrime is perhaps more alarming than ever as it has become an organized crime, sometimes purportedly backed by state actors. From the common cybercrime tools like smishing, phishing, and phishing, to the more sophisticated approaches like distributed denial of service, cross-site scripting, and ransomwares, the impact of cyber attacks is no longer remote given the interconnectedness of systems. It only takes one weak link to shut down an entire ecosystem. Nobody wants to be that weak link that exposes the vulnerability of our ecosystem. This system vulnerability is being reinforced by the increasing adoption of application programming interfaces open banking, 
and other liberal technologies that foster efficiency and liberal data exchanges within the remit of tolerable disclosures and global data protection regulations. Some people have advocated that perhaps the best way to protect the system is to avoid interconnectivity of systems. I'm not sure that that solves our problem. And indeed, that would be like going back to the Stone Age. We should not deny ourselves the opportunities offered by air transport, transportation, for example, because planes crash. Uh, and when they do, it can be catastrophic. Rather, airlines, airports, passengers, and all other stakeholders in the ecosystem should take relevant precautions and play active roles in ensuring safety of the system. And that should be no different uh, than uh, adoption of technology. Unfortunately, most boards and executives of private and public institutions who are on the receiving end of these attacks have not paid enough attention to information security and cyber crimes, as cyber security often ranks low on many institutions' list of priorities. With limited investment in securing ourselves and the broader ecosystem, it has become very easy to benefit from perpetuating this crime. That is why we have chosen this topic for our 25th anniversary summit. Thus, I'm immensely proud of the leadership of CSCS PLC for remaining consistent in this advocacy and a knowledge sharing initiative on cybersecurity. This is indeed the role of financial market infrastructures like CSCS. We committed 15% of our total 2021 technology budget to securing our information assets by taking preventative measures purchasing cybersecurity tools and supporting the capital markets and other sectors in penetration testing and knowledge sharing. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I am impressed by the support of the sponsors and partners for today's event, including stakeholders in the capital markets and the broader financial sector. On behalf of the board of directors, I want to thank you for your support because this issue has pertinence to national security and economic sustainability. And that is why we have uh, leading um, uh, security uh, experts here um, and um, you know, captains of industry and CEOs uh, from the capital markets um, here as well. I thank our special guests and all participants. I hope we would all take relevant action towards protecting our networks for the mutual benefit of our ecosystems and the nation at large. Please feel free to share experiences, ideas, and knowledge that can be useful as we all collaborate towards securing our businesses and institutions against our common enemy, cyber criminals. It is a battle and we must unite to win this cyber security war. I, 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 I'm sure you all note that I've used a lot of uh, military terms. It's, it's because we have so many military people in the room today. <laughs> Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. <laughs>